everyone and welcome back to another super cool radio interview i'm your host matthew thomas thank you so much for tuning in i have a great guest joining me at this time that i'm very excited to have on the podcast last month grave core released a new single entitled raise the dead please welcome the bassist and backing vocalist for grave core Cody Crypt. Yeah. Uh, hey, how's it going, man? Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Nice to see you again. Uh, yeah, I know we got quite a bit to discuss. You guys have been very busy lately. Yeah, yeah. It just uh, seems to never end, and that's a happy problem to have. Hey, I, I'd rather be busy than not, so I am uh, I feel you on that. Same, same. Yeah, last so, time we saw each other was Indiana, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. My, well, the city next to my hometown, Mishawaka. Oh, very cool. That's the name. Okay, I, I could not remember it for the life of me. I was like, it was, it was an odd name, and uh, I was out there uh, filling in for the my friends in the rumors for a couple shows. So. Yeah, which, um, which, yeah, it's funny how that happened, too. And I still have your pick. You gave me your pick. I still have it. Yeah, there you go. I might make it into a necklace at some point. I don't know yet. I say do it. <laughs> yeah, well, first I have to figure out how to do that. But yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> like a drill, like a, a drill, small bit. So we'll work through it. That's the point of this show. DIY crafting. Yeah, that that's a podcast, right? That that's what yeah. you signed up for. Yeah, <laughs> D, DIY crafting with Matthew Thomas. <laughs> oh, that's one of a new podcast now. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, "Hey, where's the music?" I'm like, no, no, crafts, <laughs> just craft. <laughs> a lot of stitch work. <laughs> oh man. But no, this is actually a music podcast. I do have a music-related question to kick off this interview. So not grave correlated, but I'm curious for you. If you could have dinner with any two musicians throughout history, living or deceased, who would they be? Oh, that is a great question, man. Um, Thank you. I mean, off the top of my head, I go to my big two, which are Gene Simmons and uh, Jerry Only from The Misfits. Very nice. That, yeah. would, that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they kind of, kind of, aside from the bass playing, which is obvious, right? Um, just uh, their um, uh, the business, the branding, um, you know, that's that type of stuff. So I was paying attention at a young age. Which band did you get into first, Kiss or Misfits? Definitely Kiss. Yep, okay. definitely Kiss. It was like around '96 when they were doing the reunion tour. I was. 12 years old i think and kind of already knew who they were um my uncle had some kiss albums growing up so i'd like seen them and i grew up a comic book kid so um you know they looked cool they looked like comic book heroes right so i would always look at those albums um but i, I was around 12 years old when they reunited and they played on um uh, dick clark's rock and new year's eve that year and uh, I just happened to catch it randomly and uh, I had a friend spending the night. He, I remember he was like, dude, let's go do something. And I was like, no, I have to watch this. Like, what is this? And just captured my imagination. And then uh, a little while after that, there used to be a comic book magazine called Wizard. And um, they had Kiss action figures in there, like made by McFarlane. And I, they captured my imagination and uh, went through my dad's cassette collection and Found a copy of Kiss's Rock and Roll Over album, and I then spent uh, uh, probably three, four months straight just side A, side B, side A, side B, side A, just over and over and over. And they were the transition between comics and rock and roll. Such a legendary group as well with with, with everything. I can definitely see the uh, the Kiss influence in, uh, in your music as well. Oh, cool, man. It's good to hear. So I always pride myself in like, uh, you know, we wear our influences on our sleeves but try not to let them define us so it's always fun hearing what people do pick out of it because some people will be like man I, I don't hear kiss in this at all and some people are like i can completely hear kiss in this so 
you know, it's fun. It's like a raw shock test. Yeah, what you said about it, very, very true, though, that you obviously, you guys don't strive to be Chris. You guys strive to be you guys. And mm. but it's cool, though. It's definitely cool. And I, I like the whole, you know, the horror aspect of you uh, of the band. I very much enjoy it. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, that uh, definitely, I mean, aside from horror movies, which I love, like the classic stuff, but uh, then that's where the Misfits came in, who I probably discovered around the time I was 16 years old. So I had about four years of Kiss fandom under my belt before the Misfits fell into my life. So, and then... Yeah, that was uh, that was a fun journey to go on. I mean, I, I very much like uh, you know the Misfits. I actually picked up. I was at a horror uh, shop in Chicago. I picked up. A, it's a red uh, coffin uh, a Misfits horror horror business pin that like they exclusively sell. So yeah, I picked up one of those. So that was really cool. That's awesome. So I don't know if I've seen that one. It says exclusive to the shop, so I, I don't think so. Yeah. All right. I right. have to show you though. I was going to say, I might have to buy that off of you. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how much money do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Talk after the broadcast. <laughs> I'll make you an offer. <laughs> All right, so my, my, well, my team will contact your team. <laughs> yeah, my people. Your people. <laughs> we'll do lunch. <laughs> All right. But I'm focusing on Gravecore now. So <laughs> at the end of August, as I mentioned, you guys released a new single, Raise the Dead, yep. which, by the way, I very much enjoy. Uh, it's it's definitely a hard rocking uh, song that I think really kicks ass. So I'm I'm curious, like, how was it writing and recording this single? Oh man! Uh, first off, thank you very much. Um, it it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a little bit of a different process. We uh we've had some like lineup changes over the years. And um, I say it often, but uh, there are no former members of Gravecore. There's just active or inactive, because I kind of look at it as a lifelong communal art project, maybe even more so than a band sometimes. So that song in particular, um, it kind of started with me and um, Colin Rott, our new lead guitar player. And we kind of put some pieces together. And then uh, I actually took a day with uh, Christ Levine, who was a uh, lead guitar player for the better part of a decade, um, and Eric Allen Poe, who was our original keyboard player back in the Blood Soak Serenade days. Um, and we went out to Catamount Studios, and um, I just showed him a couple things Colin and I had, and um, I had all the lyrics and the story worked out. And then we uh, just, uh, I mean, I think, we, I think we got out there at 10, and by noon i mean we pretty much had the whole song like the foundation anyhow and um then we just kind of spent a couple hours refining things and you know locking in melodies and making a couple lyrical adjustments and um and i brought it back to you know the current version of gravecore and uh everybody went through and just uh, uh, let me back up a little bit Zachy Massacre, a former keyboard player and lead guitar player, was involved in the demoing process as well. So he actually kind of came in and uh, helped me with, uh, uh, I think we kind of adjusted the pre-chorus a bit and put the demo together. And, you know, he was he's an invaluable resource behind the scenes, too. Um, but then brought it back to the band and kind of showed everybody the song. And then, uh, you know, we called the grave core process, right? Like, because you can have a foundation of something, but you know they're the ones playing it and uh they're offering their ideas their spin so the way jj wolf plays drums makes that song sound like it's song you know it does and the way tracy sings and the way uh nick actually nick black our keyboard player um we didn't have any really defined keyboard parts for the chorus and um she came in with this part uh it just it blew our minds like it was completely out of left field but uh, it's one of those things where the second you hear it, you're like, that's it, dude. Like, that's it. That's, that's the part. So, uh, so she knocked it out of the park. And then of course the grave core secret ingredient is Scott AD. So the second Scott starts playing rhythm guitar, it, I mean, it doesn't matter what the song is. It just automatically sounds like grave core. So he's the, He's always the connective tissue that takes, you know, like anything from like 07, 08 and makes it sound like 2020. Like it, it it's, it's honestly crazy. Even when we did the, uh, the acoustic session stuff a couple of years ago, I don't think I'd ever seen the man touch an acoustic guitar, but the second he laid down his guitar tracks, I'm like, Oh, you just made acoustic songs sound like grave chords. So there you go. So he's the magic. Well, that's really awesome to hear that, uh, you know, the process and then, you know, behind the song as well. As I said, 
I very much enjoy it uh, because I really like the story in it and just mm -hmm. the music itself just sounds phenomenal with it as well. Thank you. So, so like I'm curious. So like you know, with the the kind of lineup change and the new vocalist has like the uh, the new member, you know, the active members kind of changed the process over the years for the writing and recording uh, side. Um. Yeah. It's. Uh, I mean. I don't know how to want to put this. Like everybody that I've written with, like you learn from, right? And um, when different people come in, uh, with them comes different influences that get introduced into the mix. So, um, you know, like uh, Daniel from The Rumors, uh, Daniel DK, he was our original drummer. So he comes with this great style, right? And, um, you know, he kind of defined what the Gravecore sound was. But then JJ Wolf comes in and uh, he's a very different drummer. I mean, both are equally incredible in their own way. But JJ comes more from like an Avenge Sevenfold, like the Rev Avenge Sevenfold side of things which Daniel comes from more of like a Tommy Lee Motley crew, you know, big groove side of things. So very different, both very incredible, but it changes the dynamic of the band, you know, and uh, Zach comes from a very um, like My Chemical Romance world, but then Christ Levine was uh, Guns N' Roses. And uh, it's just, I, I don't know. And it all just kind of ends up in the big, melting pot that is Gravecore and those things influence me um before zach joined i was aware of the band ghost but i i never listened to them i actually assumed they were kind of one of the like a black metal band and that's not really my thing and uh so i just kind of avoided them and then he was like no dude like ghost is incredible like that's my keyboard influence and i was like really so i was like oh check it out now they're one of my favorite bands <laughs> like i absolutely love them so in that influences stuff too and you know just to button back to your previous question a little bit with the song creation too um we record everything at catamount studios and uh, one of the cool things we do with the writing and creation of any song that we do is um uh, we actually drop all of our rhythm section stuff to like two inch tape like very old school way of doing it so you know whether it's jj or daniel or whoever's in at that point we roll tape and uh, all the bass and drums goes down that way and then he drops it into pro tools and we do the rest that way but i think that helps with uh the grave core sound as well that's a very cool way to record i know um you know some bands prefer you know um starting with Pro Tools, but I kind of like that. It kind of it gives you um, a little bit of a different foundation to work with. Yeah. Uh, as well. Plus, can't make, you can't make mistakes on tape. <laughs> <laughs> we make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> they go through a lot of tape. <laughs> Have you ever run out of tape, though? No, no. Okay, good. <laughs> no, <we're> good. <laughs> not yet, anyhow. <laughs> well, yeah, not yet. Just, just give it a little bit. That's right. All right, so I, I did one more question about the single, and then I, I will be transitioning to some other aspects of Grave Core. So I'm curious, the title "Raise the Dead," um, how'd that come about? Was that already the working title, or like how did that come to fruition? I'll give you an exclusive. How about that? Uh, I'm in. I haven't really talked about this yet with the uh, the creation of the new song, because um, usually we only do like one or two a year, right? That you know come out to promote Chaos for a Cause and the big Halloween, you know, what we call Grave Core season. And uh, a lot of times the songs are kind of, you know, ideas pop in my head. I'll usually have like a title, a vibe, you know, something I'm going for, a story I want to tell. A lot of them tell stories, right? Because um, ultimately at the end of the day, I'm just a failed comic book movie script writer. <laughs> like that's what I really wanted to do when I was a kid. But um, uh, so Raise the Dead, um, it was kind of a... There's there's a few layers to it. So a very simple title. Um, I got a piece of advice where, you know, somebody was because last year's single was called Collateral Damage. And, you know, it was horror related because it was like about like witchcraft and stuff like that. But it was it was a little more masked, I guess, a little more poetic. Um, so this year, you know, they were like, you know, your strength is just your straight up monster banger type songs. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go really on the nose with the title and I'm just going to call it raise the dead. You know, uh, it's simple. It's powerful. Um, but, uh, I also, <laughs> there's a songwriter named Desmond child. Are you, you aware of Desmond? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I'm wearing an Alex Cooper shirt. So oh, yeah, yeah. See, okay. Perfect. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh. So yeah, Desmond obviously worked with like Alice Cooper on like poison, um, you know, Bon Jovi, um, kiss, right. Kiss. 
Uh, but like he worked on um, like with all these incredible bands, Aerosmith, like all these just songs with giant choruses. And I just, I kind of fell down a rabbit hole listening to like Desmond child playlists. And um, I was like, man, like these songs just get stuck in your head. What an incredible knack for that. And then I kind of started thinking too, I was like, you know, like the days of the rock anthem are a little bit gone it's probably like cheesy nowadays to a degree to you know release a like raise your hands to rock you know type type song you know like i love them i'm not i'm not making fun of them by any means like that's it's my favorite thing in the whole world but it's like you just when was the last time you heard a like a dedicated rock anthem so so i kind of like my head starts like you know like oh man like well, what if we did this and then like what if it's a cinematic story and then like what if i found a way to bring back the rock anthem but mask it a little bit so raise the dead is essentially like if you break down the lyrics like the pre-chorus is like it's your time to come alive like all right audience get ready here comes the big rock chorus right or i know i'm sorry it's uh it's uh can you feel it coursing through your veins and so like all right, all right get ready here it comes and then the first you know first lyric of the chorus is it's your time to come alive so that's telling the audience that's the command right like all right it's your time here it is you know come alive uh, with these words, hell will rise. Like, all right, let's raise some hell. And then the last part of it's a little more of a you know plot device, storytelling device to tie it into the lyrics. But then the post-chorus of raise them up, raise them up, raise the dead is essentially raise your fists, raise your fists. Like, so I kind of took that, and then um, I said I had a story in mind. Um, I'm a father. I have a four-year-old daughter, and. Um, you know, uh, kind of as you become a dad, you're like, man, like what I wouldn't do for this kid, right? Like I love her with all my heart. So really at, at, at the end of the day, the story is just a very simple love story. Like what would you do to, to bring back somebody that you love? So like, I kind of was like, oh, I'm gonna take the cinematic, I'm gonna take the rock anthem, and I'm gonna take the Desmond Child that like, I'm gonna tie it all together. And that was this one song. And whether I hit the mark or not, I don't know, but <laughs> people seem to like it. So it's good. I appreciate your share. I think you definitely hit the mark because I I very much enjoy it for me personally. Oh, uh, I think all the elements that you described, um, I think are there, which also kind of connects to where I was going with this, which is the music video, mm, which yes. is the the you know the you know the visual for Raise the Dead. Uh there's a lot of different scenes in there. You know, it's performance, there's acting. Uh, and so like, how was it like putting all that together and filming that? Oh, dude, it was awesome. Um, like I said, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to write movies and stuff, right? Like I wanted to be a writer. So that was kind of like my first time, like every grave core song is a story of some sort that I have an idea. Usually I'll like kind of jot out a couple paragraphs or an outline. And then I end up just, you know, turning it over to lyrics and stuff like that. Um, so that was kind of my first time getting to bring one of the stories to life. And uh, it was great. We worked with uh, Roman at Thrash Panda Media. So him and I did some phone calls. And I, you know, he kind of had a couple ideas. And, you know, I kind of went over them. And I was like, well, you know, the lyrics are this. So, you know, this. And kind of revealed some of the storytelling aspect to him. And, you know, like I said, even though it's a simple love story, for me, it was like what I would do for my daughter, right? But, it, you know, it's framed through a traditional love story, like, you know, man and woman like what would you do to get your wife back type thing but uh but yeah we kind of went through it all and uh kind of broke it all down and uh then also it was you know uh indie filmmaking 101 of like well what do we have access to and uh i remember roman was like dude it'd be great if like we could like find a big warehouse if we could find a wooded area if we could find like an old car we have all that <laughs> we, like we're at grave core rehearses i'm like dude hold on a second like i sent him some videos of like you know the big warehouse where we rehearse in and uh you know all that stuff and um and then beyond that and like the car like jj wolf uh he's uh he's in a car club outside of grave core so he has like lots of contacts in that regard so um yeah then it was kind of teamwork at that point everyone's like you know here's the list what can what can you get what can you get what you what can you get? What do we have to inevitably buy off of Amazon, right? And have here in two days because we forgot. Uh, <laughs> Amazon Prime comes in handy. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess it does. <laughs> Amazon should pay. 
because <laughs> they need all the help they can get, frankly. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm sure. They're tanking. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, I'm just calling up um, friends of ours to come act in the video and, like, kind of piecing it all together. And then there's the usual, uh, the usual side of anything uh, with a band where you rely on other people, right? Like, hey, guys, we're doing this thing. Do you want to be a part of it? Yeah, man, we're in. If you ever need anything, we're in. And then two days ahead of time being like, oh, hey, man, sorry, <laughs> I'm not going to, which I get it. Life happens. I don't want to, I don't want to bust balls too much, but then you're scrambling to find replacements. And uh, the night before the video, um, we had a guy locked in to do the the lead, right? The male lead, uh, you know, in the uh, video. And he was also providing a lot of like the, you know, the prop weapons and stuff like that. And um, I think it was like, 10 o'clock the night before i was scheduled to be up at 4 a.m uh i get a call that he's not going to be able to do it you know he had a family emergency so you know obviously best wishes to him i you know family comes first always but there was oh no we need a male lead so i called up uh my friend mikey who was going to be there anyhow as a zombie and i was like hey buddy <laughs> got a little uh, upgrade for you how do you feel about being the lead role and he's like whatever you need i'm in so he actually went and bought the prop weapons himself on the way in that morning and uh yeah he knocked it out of the park you know we're super happy with the way it turned out so props to mikey well, yeah, for sure. But hey, guess who got promoted? You, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> well, I I very much enjoy because again, it matches you know the music and the story in there as well, and putting it to a visual as well. As I said, a lot of cool elements in there. You got the classic car, you got the performance, you got the zombies. Mm -hmm. uh, it was all of it tied together very well. Plus, I think Gravecore uh, News Network was there as well. <laughs> yeah that was an add-on actually uh roman from thrash uh he was like yeah i'm gonna film a little something extra because we did all that filming in one day like i think we started at like eight that morning like we got there at like four or five got makeup got everything set up and ready and then i think i want to say it was eight o'clock we started filming and then we wrapped the band by noon uh and then got set up for the other stuff and then yeah we spent the afternoon doing all the acted bits or whatever but so the the news the news piece though that was a fun add-on because he sent draft one that wasn't in it and i was like already on draft one i'm like this is awesome like just a couple notes and uh draft two that came back after he filmed that and it was just super fun easter egg i loved it so much so <laughs> I, I love that i love easter eggs man i they're, they're fun for me because Everything we do, every song, video, visual, whatever we're doing, like uh, I kind of look at it, like I said, as an art project. So it's almost like a scrapbook. So even our recorded songs, like I'm constantly bringing in um, the inactive members, um, my daughter, uh, friends, and just anybody to be a piece of it. And, you know, maybe not everyone knows that, but when I hear those songs, right, like when I hear the beginning of Beware the Blood Moon, uh, what I hear is my daughter's heartbeat from the day she was born because I sampled it and I put it in the song. So, you know, so like I like doing fun stuff like that. Or like uh, Arlie Vaughn, our original singer, he's sang on everything since he's left the band. He's he's in like every chorus layer. So like even Raise the Dead, like he came in and he sang the whole chorus and he's one of the double tracks underneath there. And I just love doing stuff like that. So that makes it fun for me. Oh, yeah, no, it definitely should be fun, and you know, if anyone uh, you know uh, you know picks up on that, I think it's even cooler. You know, so know some of the history behind it as well. It's just fun. It's fun to do. Obviously, you know, it's art. Uh, it should. Uh, there's really no rules for it, so you can you know do whatever whatever you're feeling, and I think it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's oh, and I think it keeps those guys involved and happy because no one's ever really left the band, you know, because they wanted to. There's always been like a life circumstance or something, so. They still get to be involved. They still believe, you know, in the project and stuff. And then, uh, you know, having my niece or nephew come in or, you know, daughter, like it's giving them something cool too. like, oh, yeah, by the way, I sing on this song that gets played on the radio. <laughs> they should add that to the resume. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to shift gears a little bit now because I want to talk about the performance side. Because okay. I have... Uh, I've heard you guys have a very cool show coming up on uh, October 26th. That's right. Uh, so, like, you know, uh, what are the details? Like, what can people expect? Like, all of that. Yeah, man. So, uh, we do a show um, every year called Chaos for a Cause. We partner with uh, Rock 108, which is one of the biggest active rock stations in the Midwest. Um, they're 
absolutely incredible to work with. Um, and uh, yeah, we work together with them on putting the show um, all together. Each show takes a, an, almost an entire year of planning and preparation. Um, so I, this is no joke. I already have like a good chunk of year five planned out just because I'm like trying to always stay ahead of stuff. And uh, so I have like a lineup in mind and, you know, everything's subject to approvals and, you know, contracts and so on and so forth. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we put everything into it. I mean, we play live throughout the year, right? But that's the big one. I always tell people, I'm like, man, if you're going to choose one Gravecore show to go to in a year, please, <laughs> please let it be this one. This year, it's October 26th. Um, it's at the Electric Park Ballroom again. Year one, I think we had 350 people show up, which is an awesome number. Uh, year two, it went up to 500 people. So this year, I'm hoping... Uh, that we can maybe hit that seven, eight hundred mark and, you know, just continue to grow the thing. All the proceeds go to a local Iowa charity here called the Iowa Giving Crew. And we jumpstart their Operation Give Birds, which puts uh, Thanksgiving meals on uh, the tables of families in need, um, you know, here in Iowa through the holiday season. So you also get to directly see where your hard work and your money is going. Um, it's the biggest costume contest in the entire state, uh, over $2,000 in cash prizes. Um, this year we have a youth division, so under 18, and then we have the adults like over 18. Um, with the over 18, actually, the grand prize is $1,000 cash, which that's nuts, man. <laughs> that's a lot of money. So we're headlining this year. Uh, we got Velvet Chains from Las Vegas coming in. They just got off tour with Slash down in Brazil. They got songs on the radio. They're just killing it. Um, and then uh, my good friend Von Bolt is the guitar player for that band. So. Um, I, uh, we had another band scheduled to play and one week before announcement, uh, that band was no longer able to play. And, uh, so we had to scramble and I called him and I was like, dude, I was like, anyway, you guys want to come to Iowa and play a, play a charity show? And he's like, give me an hour. And an hour later, we just had to hammer out some contract details and yeah, we had velvet chains. So that was sweet. Uh, props to those guys. Thank you. Uh, and then we have, um, we had another band ended up, uh, splitting up, uh, called hardship, but, uh, they were replaced by guilty of treason who, um, we always like to have like one, like, you know, heavy metal band on the bill and, uh, guilty is the band this year. Those guys are incredible, man. Uh, they're brutal. They're killing it. Um, they're out there doing the thing. We've got Youth Gone Wild. They've been in the scene for a long time. Non Grata, they come back every year. Those guys are awesome. If you're not familiar with them, dude, I highly recommend checking them out. They're good, good friends of ours. Um, they come back every year to play with us. And I'm probably forgetting a band. I'm going to look at the poster real quick. Oh, Switch, <laughs> Switchblade Saturdays. Uh, yeah, they're also good friends of ours. Uh, they would have killed me if I forgot them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I got them back. Um, we're doing a, something a little different this year. Um, it's, you know, it's a rock concert, but like, um, and we try to always put on like the biggest show possible. Um, but this year we're actually doing a fully immersive event. Um, I haven't talked about it too much, so another exclusive for you, but theme this year is circus of the undead so we are um right now figuring out how to build an entire circus inside of the electric park ballroom so and uh that'll carry on through the night um and then last year we actually um we filmed and recorded it for a live album um it turned out pretty good um but we kind of we kind of learned some lessons because we had never really done it before um, and with how big we're going for this year's show, we have actually decided to re-record and refilm. So um, you can come be a part of Gravecore history that night. There's a lot going on, you know. Not in, uh, you know, from not only the music side, obviously the preparation side mm -hmm. and the filming side as well. You're going to be very busy that day, but I think it's going to turn out amazing. The lineup looks incredible, and it's it's all for a very good cause as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And and that's it. Uh, you know, it's called Chaos for a Cause, but uh, it's not just a clever name. Like, uh, our Grave Corps' lives are literally chaos uh, for the next five, six weeks getting ready for the show. So, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, the hope is to raise a ton of money. Last year, we brought in over $10,000 um, for the charity. Um, the previous two years uh, ended up being 
uh, 10,000 combined. So uh, we've done over $20,000 for this charity in just three years. So we're hoping to obviously top that and go even bigger this year. We're right on. Well, I wish you guys the best with everything. Uh, you know, obviously it's chaos right now, but it's, it's definitely at the end, the ultimate goal, it's worth it Yeah, uh, as well. Absolutely. If you want to uh, make the trip to Iowa, I'll put you on the guest list. I appreciate it, but I'm actually uh, emceeing a local Halloween show uh, on the 26th. Well, I'll cancel it. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I saw it and I was like, man, it looks like it's going to be an awesome event. So maybe next year, year five, I might be able to get out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. So just let me know and I'll get you taken care of. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. So, but now I, I also did want to talk about, uh, you know, still focusing on uh, the live show. So for you, this might be a little bit of a difficult, difficult question, but uh, do you have a favorite song to perform live? Oh, that is a difficult question. <laughs> That's like, what kid's your favorite kid? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, <sighs> mm, I don't know. Uh, they kind of check different boxes. Um I, I I mean, there's a grave course sound, right? But like, um, at a certain point, I kind of consciously chose as like, well, I don't have to be limited to that, right? Like, if I'm listening to doo-wop, I can write a song like Blood Drops, or if I want to write a big sprawling epic, I can write Rise. And and when I say I, I mean the band, right? I guess like you know, it's not just me writing those songs, but uh, you know, uh, so I I don't know, like they kind of check different boxes, um. New Disaster is, um, that's always like our, usually our set closer. Uh, it's kind of like, I always call it our rock and roll all night, right? Like that's going to be the big last grave course song of the evening. Um, sometimes we might throw in a cover after it, but it's just a stomper. It's super fun. The audience likes it. Um, we actually did a re-record of it with Tracy um, as the B-side to Raise the Dead. Uh, specifically because that is the last grave course song the audience hears, you know, before they go home. And if they were like, man, I really like that. And they're not familiar with us. And they go look up the catalog and they hear the version with Arlie. And then they're like, well, that doesn't sound the same. So we, uh, that's kind of why we chose to re-record that and do that as a B side this year. So if I had to pick one, I'm going to say that one. So, but, uh, they all check different boxes. So Death Ride 77 is a fun opener. Um, so I love love doing that one. Um, it's a cool when we, uh, like, I don't want to say bring it down. I don't like that term. But, like, when we pull the dynamics back um, and do blood drops, like, you know, Colin, Tracy, like, one guitar doing the opening. And then, you know, like, the, the punkier part kicks in. And, oh, it's all fun, man. So it's all fun. But New Disaster. I'll, I'll say the New Disaster. I know that's usually one of the more difficult questions I ask, especially for like songwriters, because, you know, obviously, as you said, they're all they all have like different meanings to yeah. you. So, yeah, but I always I always like to throw that in. Uh, Got to keep people on their toes here on Super Cool Radio. If we ever do this again, you ask that again, I'll, it'll probably be like, beware the blood moon. Yeah, definitely beware the blood. But like, I'll probably change it every single time. <laughs> uh, well, well, <laughs> next interview, I'm going to ask it again, though. <laughs> just keep track like keep a tally on your end <laughs> they'll be like well actually you said new disaster last time <laughs> like you've given seven <laughs> answers in three interviews <laughs> oh that'd be funny to like actually like fact check someone on a previous interview i've never I done that but it'll be hilarious i think that'd be funny oh, dude i'd be the worst i'm a, I'm like a creature of like the moment <laughs> and emotion and stuff like that so my answers probably change every single time <laughs> okay well it's funny if I ever answer like, you know, sometimes people ask me the same question I ask them and like, I'm sure that my answer has changed a lot. I'm glad no one has picked up on that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, what are your two favorite albums? I'd be like, oh, it's these two. Like, well, actually you said this last time. Well, well now I'm curious. What are your two favorite albums? Uh, I would say Iggy Pop, Post Pop Depression and yeah. Killer by Alice Cooper. Oh, dude, what a great favorite two albums. That's awesome. Killer is one of my favorite records. Like you drive me nervous, dude. Like, oh yeah, it's song. I love that song. So huge Alice Cooper guy. So oh yeah, like uh, my top two favorite like Alice Cooper albums are, uh, which is funny. You talked about Desmond Child. Uh, so it's uh, it's Trash and Killer. Those are my two favorites. Oh nice, dude. Yeah, kind of different ends of the spectrum there too. So that's awesome. Uh, if I had to do two, which I know you didn't ask this question, and I've now hijacked your interview, so. 
Uh, that's cool. I'm asking <laughs> you the questions. <laughs> uh, I would billion dollar babies is my favorite. I love yeah. billion dollar babies. That was the kind of the first one that really like hit and resonated. Uh, but then I would go hey stupid actually for probably number two. Ooh. So, yeah, I love that record. That was the first one I had on like cassette tape. So like hurricane years and uh, loves a loaded gun and yeah, just. A- absolutely amazing album so funny you mentioned hey stupid so like before like work because uh over the summer i worked for a minor league baseball team i would like it was either like trash hey stupid or killer yeah and I, I noticed that if i didn't listen to an alice cooper album before work it everything went terribly so i had to listen to an alice cooper, cooper album before work and everything went great Oh, man. Uh, I actually, uh, uh, two things. One, as you were talking about Cooper, I was staring across the room at my stage used Alice Cooper cane. Uh, but uh, two, um, I do the same thing. Like before we play live, um, I have to listen to at least one Kiss song and one Misfit song. Like they're kind of like my pump ups, right? Like I'm like, I got, even if it's just like 30 seconds of each, if I'm pressed for time, I'm like, I just got to get in that head space and then be ready to go. It, at least it definitely helped me. Like, like listen to the steak bite before, a, like before a, a, a baseball game, like to me, it just put me in the right mood to like, all right, I'm ready to do this. Snake bite is Tracy Von Cripp's favorite Alice Cooper song. Bro, I, the favorite song. song. Yeah. 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 She told me that the first time I was like, this might be love. <laughs> I agree with that. I agree. With, I mean, it's so good. Plus, he added it back to the set now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He played it last year. I saw him and Rob Zombie, uh, Colin and I from Gravecore went down um, uh, to Des Moines, and they were playing the Wells Fargo Arena. We actually had a fan hook us up with some VIP passes, and uh, so we got to go down there and got some pretty sweet seating and uh yeah we gotta watch the coop and zombie tear the roof off the place it was awesome dude i forgot the name of that tour but i i saw him in indianapolis i'm pretty sure it's the same tour both of them yep um i forgot the tour name though but yeah it's on parade there we go yes yep. yep yeah great tour great packaging man i saw uh alice cooper and rob zombie um 2010 i think um it was, what was it called was it the twins of evil I don't remember, but anyhow, I they played think like so, a, but I don't. Yeah, they played like a small auditorium up in Minnesota, and uh, Christ Levine and I actually road tripped up for it. And it was like, uh, man, uh, not even an auditorium. Like it was almost like a high school gymnasium. Like it was really small. And uh, I cite it as one of like the top five concerts I've ever been to. It was bonkers. So and it was kind of like the old school and the new school and. Uh, Gravecore wasn't active at that point. And that was kind of the thing that lit the fire where I was like, I have to figure out how to get Gravecore active again. <laughs> I know Al, uh, Alice Cooper and Rod, like just their aesthetic with everything is just amazing and everything they include. And what I really like about it, it's not just props for the sake of props. It's props for the purpose that it matches mm-hmm. You know, the song and what the, the story they're telling just so well. The other thing I like about Alice is um, he doesn't break character on stage, right? It's not, you know, hey, Dallas, how you doing tonight? Blah, blah, blah. You know, he's he's got the focus. He's, you know, he, uh, I've heard him say in interviews where he's like, even if the audience doesn't catch, like, that the set list is telling a story, like, each set list is laid out to tell a specific story. And uh, I love that, and uh, we actually try to do the same thing. So I directly took that from the coop. So, hey, great, great person to steal something from, though. Absolutely, he is, man. He he is so cool. I I know we're kind of going off on a whole sidebar, but um, okay. <laughs> I I love Alice Cooper's my favorite. Like I, I it was the first concert I saw, so mm. like, I love Alice Cooper. Have you met Alice? I'm not actually. Oh, dude, you gotta meet him. He is the nicest guy. How far are you from Chicago? Uh, about two hours. Two hours, dude. He's gonna be at the Days of the Dead convention uh, in at the end of uh, November. So, yeah. So go meet him, dude. Pay fifty bucks for an autograph and a picture. So he's super nice, super accommodating. Um, in those situations, sometimes you get like herded through like cattle. But um, I met Alice at one of them a few years ago, and. He genuinely like looks you in the eye, took his time, told some stories, like very cool dude. It'd be worth the trip, man. I'll probably be there. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to see what I can do, but uh, I actually, I, I actually interviewed uh, Chuck Garrick. 
Uh, I ordered the shirt. <laughs> he was so cool. And like, so last year I saw Alice Cooper, but during that time, I think Nita Strauss, I think she was sick. She wasn't there. Mm-hmm. So usually there was a guitar solo. Yep. You know, at some point during the set. But instead, since obviously Nita wasn't there, uh, Chuck played a bass solo. How cool. And it was only for, I think, four or five shows that she was not there. Okay. Uh, and I happened to see him on you know that stretch of the tour where nita wasn't there so i asked chuck about like how did that bass solo like come about and he's like alice said we should do something different instead of a guitar solo and i was mm-hmm. like see like he i just like that you know he's always thinking like even if something like that happens that alice like hey let's do this instead then yep yep you pivot you, you don't have another choice like the show must go on right so you just figure out how to make it go on and uh, to bridge it back to Gravecore. Uh, <laughs> Good transition. <laughs> we've, uh, you know, we're a six piece band um, and we've had times where we've actually played with as little as four members on stage, uh, like no lead guitar, no keyboards, just because it's like, you know, we agreed to play a show. Um, the people are expecting a show. You play for the people that are there, not the people that aren't there. And, uh, we do what we have to do, man. So as long as we got one guitar, bass, drums, and vocal, we'll make it work. So you know, you got to do that. I, you know, that's you pick those things up from people like the Coop and you know Kiss and stuff like that. So that's why they're workhorses and legends, and you know where they are today. So oh, definitely, hundred percent agree with that. I like our nice Alice Cooper sidebar uh, that we that we had. I very yeah. much enjoyed it. Dude, I, I love uh, like uh, you know Kiss, The Misfits, Alice Cooper, Rob Zombie, Murder Dolls. Like those are the bands where I'm like, I, you get me started, I can go forever, dude. Those are my favorites. Well, I got a few more things before we uh, head out here. So, like, what is the rest of 2024 and early 2025 looking looking like for Gravecore? Uh, so obviously right now everything's on chaos for a cause. Um, and then, um, the day after chaos for a cause, we are doing, um, uh, the Iowa music awards, the IMAs here in the state. Um, last year, uh, our singer Tracy Von Crypt actually won female artist of the year, which was incredible. Um, it also opened my eyes, um, being in rock music, like you're kind of, you know, get the blinders on to a degree. You're really not aware of what else is going on in other genres. Um, and I'll be honest, I didn't even really understand that other genres did things like played shows in the state or, you know, I never even ran across it. And um, it opened my eyes. There's a vibrant music scene here in the state. The, um, uh, hip hop, uh, pop music, country music, um, R&B, like there's all these incredible artists. So getting to go to that award show last year was, it was awesome and it was eye opening. And, um, you know, uh, so this year um, we were invited to perform, which is awesome. Something I I never dreamed of for Gravecore. So, uh, and those, like I said, those guys are absolutely killing it. I mean, it's a very formal uh, Grammy level award show. Um, so we're performing and then um, I don't know yet. Um, we submitted, um, you know, or uh, hope- hoping for the fan vote for rock band of the year. So, um, you know, maybe that comes through. I don't know. So uh, it's, we're up against some incredible bands. So I have no expectation in that regard, but, uh, but even if we get our uh, hat thrown in the ring, that's just an honor, you know, in and of itself. So, so we got that like literally the day after chaos for a cause. So that's that's gonna be a that's gonna be a crazy weekend. Um, and then after that, um, there's a, a possible East Coast thing, um, New Jersey, New York City area in November. Um, but I haven't. It's not confirmed yet, so I can't really talk about it. Um, and then uh, we have. Uh, well, I can't really talk about that either. Um, something in December. Uh, <laughs> that we might be doing, and then um, and then uh, hopefully out to um, Las Vegas in January or February to do something out there that I also can't really talk about yet. But uh, yeah, getting getting outside of the the Midwest a little bit this year. We haven't done anything like that in a long time. You know, we kind of stay focused regionally here in the Midwest, so it'll be fun to kind of get out there again. But uh, more of that. Um, Obviously, hopefully, chaos is a success, and we get green lit for year five for next year. Um, and then uh, 
working on the live album and video that'll probably take a, a big chunk of my time you know over the next year getting that all ready to go um and then uh I have a song written that will probably be next year's single. So there'll be a, another new Gravecore song that comes out next year. Um, maybe two. I'm not 100% sure on that yet. But um, And then just kind of merchandising. We're um, working on a Gravecore video game right now. So that uh, should make its debut at Chaos for a Cause if all goes well in the form of an actual like arcade game. And then I don't know beyond that. Um, Colin Rott is putting that whole thing together. And then, uh, I just say it all the time, but comic books, Grave Course based on a storyline. So I really, really, really would like to get the, the comic book out in the world so people know what that storyline is. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, awards are cool and everything. But for me, the biggest, uh, biggest thing would be Grave Core action figures. If I could, you know, hold a Cody Crypt action figure in my hand, because uh, yeah, I guess there's a background on here, but uh, I'm I have a ton of action figures. <laughs> I'm a big action figure guy. So, uh, but yeah, those are just kind of the ongoing goals. So, and then I'm also a big um, you know take opportunities as they arise, guys. So a lot of times I'll have like a year or two kind of roughly planned, but that can all get sidebarred if the right opportunity comes up. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Sounds like you guys got a lot of cool things in the works. Definitely excited for you guys. Uh, you know, obviously, Twin Chaos for a Cause, you know, the new music live album, uh, touring outside of Iowa, you know, shows outside of Iowa as well. So I look forward to seeing all that because it sounds like it's going to be awesome. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Of course. So uh, as we close this out, uh, for everyone watching and listening, uh, where are the best places to find Gravecore online? Yeah, so um, uh, we're pretty active on like Instagram, um, Facebook. Um, we just kind of started utilizing YouTube since uh, we finally had a music video. There's like a couple live clips on there, but we had never really used it before. Um, we just got a TikTok page, which I'm old, so I don't really know how any of that works. But luckily, uh, uh, the young and vibrant Tracy Von Crypt is figuring that out. She runs most of our social stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, at Gravecore, um, C O you know G A G R A V E C O R P S Grave Core, not corpse, core. <laughs> it's been an ongoing battle for seventeen years. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, at Gravecore, and then beyond that, um, I think all of us except JJ have um, you know member social medias, so at Cody Crypt, K-O-D-I-E-K-R-Y-P-T, at uh, Scott A.D. Official, at Tracy Von Crypt, at Nick Black 77, and at Colin Rot 77. Very nice. I'll leave some links for Gravecore in the description of this podcast as well, along with the music video for Raise the Dead as well. But Cody, thank you so much for stopping by. I had a fantastic time chatting with you. Oh, dude, it was the best, man. Uh, we should just uh, exchange numbers and talk about Alice Cooper all the time. <laughs> yes, I am in for that. Yeah, I'd be good, man. So, And uh, that's cool, by the way, when you got to interview uh, Chuck Garrett, because uh, he's he's definitely one of my heroes. You know, As a bass player, as a member of Alice Cooper, but I love Bisto Blanco, too. They're yes. huge influence on us. Um, they actually just played uh, kind of local to us, and we were uh, we had another commitment, and unfortunately able not able to throw our hat in the ring to open or even just go to the show. So that was kind of a kick to the nuts. So hopefully they come back. I hope they've been touring a lot more lately with mm -hmm. everything. So I've actually I've not seen Beast of Blanca live yet. Uh, they just haven't haven't really come to the area. So I'm hoping I get to see them at some point because like obviously. He's really, you know, he's cool in Alice Cooper, and like now, you know, he's got Calico in Bisto Blanco. I, I, I want to see it. I just haven't had, haven't been able to. Yeah, yeah, we'll make it work, man. We'll figure it. Oh, out. Yeah, at some point, I know for sure. At some point. Yeah, dude. So, well, thank you, man. Uh, I had a great time. This was a wonderful interview, and I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me this morning. Of course, of course. As same, I very much enjoy chatting with you. So, um, and hopefully, I can see. Uh, hopefully, you catch you at a show sometime. So. Yeah, yeah, we should just start doing this weekly, like a weekly, like, grave core. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you're doing now. <laughs> <laughs> Your audience is like 100% too much grave core. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I do want to say real quick, uh, Daniel, yes. 
and says hi by the way i told him i was doing this this morning so daniel from lionheart and the rumors yep. and he wanted to say hi to you um him and i and have been kind of working on the lionheart uh, 20th anniversary compilation so he was hoping that maybe when that drops uh getting a hold of you so but because uh, awesome. i also dabble in lionheart as well so very yeah i haven't i haven't talked to daniel in a while so i'm glad I'm glad he well one remembers me and two <laughs> that uh, that he's doing good and uh, yeah I'm dude anytime you know he he's so he's so cool like I very much enjoyed chatting with him as well best of the best him and I are on the phone together probably every single day so all right on well, very good very good well I think on that note like Cody thank you so much uh, for your time yeah absolutely man thank you. For Cody Crypt of Grave Corp, I'm your host always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching this on Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty.